Uh, we're live now. Okay, everybody, welcome to the Countless Vlog, episode 34. I'm here with Anita. How are you, Anita? Oh, I'm good today. So tell us about yourself. Um, well, I'm Canadian. I'm from Nova Scotia, and I'm just kind of a boring middle-aged geek <laughs> <laughs> who, who likes to, to write weird fantasy stories and dark stuff. So that's pretty much me. I'm not, I'm not at all interesting. I hope my books are though. <laughs> so, um, when did you start writing? How long have you been writing for? Well, I've been writing since really since I could pick up a pen since I was a kid. I mean, I haven't really, you know, done it seriously as a profession uh, until about 2007 is when I started in the indie um, author business. So, um, that's when I published my first poetry book. Yeah, that was, I think it was around 2007. It's been, been quite a while so it's hard to remember <laughs> yeah the older you get the worse the memory gets oh, i know how it is i'm getting old i'm getting old too so it's all good uh so uh what inspired that first book of poetry were you like writing poems and you decided to put them all together were you like uh... yeah well like like i said i've been writing po i think i was writing poems before i was writing stories really um it you know i never really did anything like form poetry until more recent years um, when I joined a poetry group, but um, so my first books really all just like freeform thoughts and stuff like that. But I figured um, I I wanted to be a writer. I didn't really know how to get into the business because I'm in Nova Scotia. Mm -hmm. That's not exactly a hotbed of the publishing yeah. industry. Yeah. Um, so I this is when the indie author uh, business was just starting really and. Um, this was way back even before Kindle when the uh, Lulu.com was just getting started. Mm -hmm. And so I figured, well, I have all these poems. I mean, I don't think they're very bad. <laughs> like all writers, you know, you think yeah, your writing's course, great, whether it is or it isn't. <laughs> You're starting out. And anyway, so I put them in a book collection and I published them on Lulu.com and I got reasonable um, a good response to it so that 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 was encouraging and then I followed that up with a short story collection and then I published my first novella um, that was kind of a dark fantasy novella mm. after that so how did you get into dark fantasy after poetry though was, you, was your poetry inspiring to the next like um was it like um, a transition kind of or was it like you were like learning a new genre well no actually well, when I started out writing this is before I was publishing I wanted to be I wanted to write mysteries because mm. that's what I really like to read. Only I found out I wasn't very good at writing <laughs> mysteries. <laughs> I mean, there's a certain craft to writing the mysteries and a lot of my mysteries, you know, just, it sort of tended to go towards fantasy anyway. Mm -hmm. So I, and I also was really into fairy tales, King Arthur um, and, and some fantasy books as well. So um, I decided, well, you know, that sounds like a pretty good genre to write in because I know quite a bit about it. So I started writing, you know, just straight fantasy. And then with the novella, it was kind of like the idea came to me, you know, what if your neighbors were vampires? And, but they, you know, you weren't afraid of them. You actually thought they were fascinating. And then I, I kind of just stuck that idea in history in the Georgian period in England, and that's how the novella came about. It was just kind of like this weird thought experiment more than anything. So um, in terms of like your process of writing, do you uh, have like a blank sheet you start out with? Do you have like a certain idea of what you want to write about? Or you just like uh, wing it kind of when you, when you first start writing to like before the editing? Um, well, I start with the idea. It's always like, you know, it's kind of like the what if idea. Mm -hmm. What if vampires moved in next door? What if um magic made you immortal uh, and things like this and then i sit down and i write i get the characters next you know it's like um, is the point of view going to be first person third person what's the main character like what's the antagonist like and then i sit down and i'm i'm very much a, a planner i plan like i do scene outlines i have world building all that sort of stuff i don't Unless I'm writing a short story. If I'm writing a short story, then I pants it into pretty much entirely. Mm -hmm. It's like with short stories, I know the beginning, I know the ending, and then I just write until the two of them meet. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. But with books, I always plan because so much of it is like magic systems and world building. And it's just like I need to get all that down 
on paper so I don't forget it. So before you go to an, like an editor, like a, like a publisher too, um, how long does it, like, do you take before you like get to that too? Like when do you feel like comfortable giving to an editor and publisher? Um, well, honestly, that depends on the book. Cause I mean, you know, some books I can, like the first drafts come fairly easy. Some books, the first drafts are a struggle. And then the editing actually comes a lot easier to me cause I'm very critical of my own work. So ripping it to shreds is not, that difficult for me <laughs> and rewriting it and getting it better and then i then i send it off to beta readers and see what their feedback is and then if uh, i make changes whenever i feel necessary from what they tell me okay. and then it goes off to the editors okay great so talk about your recent book you've published and the genre you published it under uh, well i've recently published uh, two books one was a horror fantasy uh visions and nightmares and um, the other one is the first book in my upcoming series, uh, Camelot and Morals. That's, it's actually two short stories, but it's kind of like the series starter. And that's, that's more of a contemporary fantasy based on Arthurian legend. Um, Visions and Nightmares is a horror fantasy. It's, it's dark fantasy, but it's all the, women, all the stories in the collection are female protagonists. And um, like the tagline said, it's all about revenge, death, and fate. And various horrible things <laughs> happen in the book <laughs> to these women. And sometimes the women are the ones making the horrible things happen, which I, which I like to play with the idea, you know, because I mean, a lot of fantasy women are, have been victims. Mm. But I like to play with the idea of having female characters be the antagonists, be the villains, be the aggressors which is kind of fun because, you know, it, it, it makes them for interesting uh, storylines. Um, but with the Camelot Immortals uh, stories, that one is, that's just Arthurian legend that I've taken and made twisted into sort of this weird mix of, of myth and, and fantasy characters. Basically, the premise of that is that if you are a witch or a wizard, and you go through this certain ritual, you become immortal. So all the characters of Camelot are actually still hanging around in modern day, in the modern day world, but they're still getting into these magical trouble and quests and things are happening and basically everything goes to crap. <laughs> so with some um, character development, um, since you have like so much deep, vivid characters, um, did you have like one character you created at once or like did you create like a character and then uh, you thought, oh, I thought of you could match up with this character as you went along, like each character had their own uh, unique, um, I guess, idea, ideas, but then you like you added, added characters to each one to match it up with the story? Um, yeah, well, like with the, the Camelot and Mar the Mortals, all the characters are based on their legendary counterparts but I've kind of tweaked their legends, tweaked their personalities to fit the story. Like with my main character, Nimue, um, she's still that witch that seduced Merlin, or, but I've flipped, flipped the script and had Merlin seduce her. So she's the victim. And so this, when she trapped Merlin, because the legend goes she trapped Merlin either as a tree or a cave, in a cave, um, she, it's kind of like her getting revenge. On what for what he did to her and but she's also this immortal witch and she's drinks too much she swears too much um you know so she's she's just kind of navigating life like all of us only she just has all this baggage that she's dragging along with her and throughout the series you're going to see her deal with that baggage mm. Cool. So uh, who are the influences on uh, authors in terms of authors and writers that influence you? Um, I think my biggest influence was Ray Bradbury because um, it's especially his short stories because his, his, his uh, story uh, all summer in one day it, the emotional impact of that really showed me what writing can do to a reader because you know I mean that's it just, the ending of that story is just, it just stays with you. And some of his other short stories uh, are like that too. And he had such a, a lyrical way with his writing that really kind of resonated with me. And, and Neil Gaiman is another one. He's really, his, his prose is really 
influenced me, as well as the Canadian writer Guy Gabriel Kay. He, his stuff is just beautiful. I mean, if I could write half as well as he does, I'd be happy. Yeah. But um, you're always getting there, though. It's always room for growth and all that, too, when you're writing. Like, even if we'd, like, our best, like, worst critics, like you said, too, there's always, like, room for growth, too. And, like, we could take, like, oh, like, if they can do it, I can do it. So even if you can't do it the same way, you can do it in your own league way, too. So um, I like to talk about, like, something, like, like, really fun, too. Like, not fun, but, you know, like, business, business side of, too. Like, the um, branding and promoting yourself. Um, do you self-publish or you have a publisher? Um, I self-publish. And um, um, my branding is basically, um, you know, dark <laughs> like i've got my tagline is um be afraid of the dark because that you know because i write horror and i tend to write the darker fantasies so it's like you know i kind of do it with a little bit of a tongue-in-cheek you know it's kind of like uh, uh, a little bit of black a little dark humor uh, a little bit of uh, snarkiness uh, just you know have fun it's like on my twitter account um for my horror books, uh, I sometimes have like a, a body count. I tell people, you know, like, um, yeah, this book, yeah, 10 people die in this book, you know, it's like, so it's kind of like, I have a little fun with the, with the, the horror and the darkness of it. That's kind of my brand. So when people, when, pe when you're writing this book, uh, when your books, uh, what do you want people to take away from it? Do you have like a certain idea if you want people to take away from it when you're writing your books? Like you want certain people to like, oh, this I want. The, I thought people would like get this idea from this, or uh, do you want them to like add their own like little skill and add their own like little like um, thoughts on it? Yeah, well, I think as an author, you always want people to take away certain ideas, depending on the book. You know what you're putting in the book, but but honestly, I like to see what the readers find in the book because sometimes that can be actually more interesting than what you put into them especially with the poetry because i've found readers have re read my poems and they found things in it that they uh, that i never intended or never even saw when i was writing it i thought oh geez that's cool you know it's so really it i like it when the readers find things you don't actually tend or you maybe never even realized you were putting into the books Okay, so who is your audience um, in terms of your books, from, po from poetry to um, like the fantasy? Well, with the fantasy and horror, I probably am targeting the people who like the darker stuff, who like to be scared, who like the the um, who like mythology and history, and uh, you know, um, I'm not really targeting people who like sort of like the Disneyfied versions of fairy tales, but people who like the darker original <laughs> versions of the fairy tales because that's what you're going to find in my books with the poetry um yeah it's kind of a mix of because my poems can range from sort of lighter inspiring stuff to like the two books i have of, of horror poetry so you it, depending on your taste in poetry you can probably find a lot of things you like with my poetry books depending on the book too so so what's been some of the feedback from like online people and like people that like give you like reviews from like the like, what's been the feedback like recent feedback you've gotten? Yeah, well, most of the feedback I've gotten has been pretty positive. People do seem to like my books, so I mean I'm happy with that. I mean you can't please everybody, so you know you've gotten a few people who didn't like mm -hmm. this or that, but you know that's, that's nothing really harsh or mean or anything. So mm. I've been pretty pleased with it so far. That's great. So in terms of like the, with the um, quarantine, now you, st you guys still in quarantine like in um, Canada? Are you guys like haven't lived? Um, well, Nova Scotia is kind of coming out of it a little bit. We're, we're, we're slowly coming out, um, reopening. Um, Ontario and Quebec are still a little locked down because their, their, their numbers were a lot higher than ours. But yeah, so it's, it's easing up a little here. So, so yeah. has, it, has it affected your creativity at all when it first started? Like, could you find yourself like writing more or less during the time? Uh, it did when it first started. I mean, when it really came, uh, like April was National Poetry Month, so I was busy with that. So it wasn't too bad in April, but May came along and it was like, okay, it's like, I got to edit the book. And it's like, um, okay, I don't want to edit the book. <laughs> it's like, I, I want to go watch Netflix and play bad video games. <laughs> so there, there was a couple of weeks of that, but eventually I kind of eased back into editing. And, and by the time June rolled around, I was in full edit mode. So so uh, what's your next project you're working on? What are some of your present goals like moving forward? Well, for right now, I'm 
finishing the series because I'm writing the whole Camelot Immortal series at once because the first four books are kind of like uh, one, one continuous arc. So I'm getting it all written down and, and finished before I, uh, before I start publishing really. So I don't have to go back and fiddle with things. With my original trilogy, the saga of the outer islands, I published one book at a time and I had to adjust things. But, so I didn't want to do that again. So, um, yeah, so I finished book one of the Camelot Immortals, and that's currently in beta reading. And uh, book two, first draft is done. Book three I'm working on now, and then I'll be moving on to book four. And there will be a book five, too, but that's kind of starting a new arc. And I can't talk about it because it's big spoilers. <laughs> no problem, no problem. I don't want to get too much away because, you know, they have to read the series. Yeah, first. well, yeah, I can't even talk about the title because the title is a big spoiler. Oh, okay. Okay, moving on to the next question. Um, so uh, if you could give advice to any young authors out there, any advice to people, authors struggling out there, any, like, what could you tell them from your experience? Um, well, find a, a nice support group, I think is the best advice I can give them. Because if you have people who are supportive but not like, you know, just, oh, it's nice, everything's nice, supportive. But, you know, they, they give you support on what's nice, what you can improve, nice creative criticism and, and learn to take the creative criticism too, because if you um, listen to what they have to say and, and uh, envelop that into your work and improve your work, then you're going to be a better writer. Okay, great. So I like to end these with like a positive message from you to like the readers out there and like people out of the world out there, anything like that you share? Like... Um, be kind. And that's the best message I think you can say today is just be kind to your fellow man because I mean, they're the same as you, um, same feelings, same emotions, same problems. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, yeah, it's just we're just we're not different from each other. So just be kind to people. All right. Thank you for those words. Thank you for coming on. And um, I like you to like, plug yourself now. Uh, where can people find you on your books? Um, I have a website. Welcome to Avalon at uh, afstuart.ca. I'm over on Twitter at, at scribe77, and I have a Facebook group, uh, AF Stewart's Minions. So that's, that's basically where I spend most of my time. Okay. Thank you for um, coming on and sharing your experience and sharing your, about your books. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you. Pleasure being here. And thank you guys for watching. This has been the Countless Vlog guest episode 34 with my guest, Anita Ward. Thank you, Anita. Okay. All right. Have a good day. Yep. Bye.